Hey everyone, welcome to Bald Guy Money. With a lot of people saying that macro events are resulting in the unraveling of the US dollar, I think it's time for us to explore what it would take in a silver-based system to reach millionaire status with your silver stack. I promise this is going to be a really interesting and fun video and a great follow-up to the 1% of Silver Stackers video. Just before getting into it, I'd like to ask you all to leave a like in support of this channel. We just hit 20,000 subscribers and it's all thanks to people like you who have been making noise for the algorithm. Your likes have been getting this content to more people, to new stackers, and especially to younger people who really need to be hearing this educational message. So thank you again for leaving a like. And now, how much silver do you need to achieve millionaire status? Let's get right into it. And I became interested in answering this question after doing the video on how much it takes to be in the top 1% of silver stackers. Because what became painfully obvious to me in preparing for that video is that the number of people preparing themselves with silver is very low. And when compared to how much gold is circulating and being mined each year in comparison to silver, there is a lot less silver out there than people think. In fact, looking at how many millionaires there are in the world, if we take our 4 billion ounces of investment grade bullion silver, which is the amount of silver bullion we assumed is available in private hands worldwide from the top 1% of stackers video, it means that there is only 71 ounces of silver per millionaire in the world today. And just imagine what could happen if they all woke up tomorrow and said, I want to buy silver. That would clearly create an issue. But that bit of information doesn't fully answer our question because there are a lot of millionaires out there who are in asset classes we are not going to count for the purpose of this video, namely equities, and that means stocks, real estate, and bonds also known as fixed income assets. And that's because most people who stack see metals as either cash or as a separate asset class equal to the cash asset class. So we have to compare apples to apples in this video. And to make it perfectly clear, and to make sure we are not double counting anything or making any crazy assumptions on the value of silver, we are going to stick to comparing the amount of silver out there to the M1 money supply, which includes currency, demand deposits, and other liquid deposits, including savings deposits. So the absolute most liquid kind of money, the kind you might buy a steak dinner with. And to determine how much M1 money is actually out there, I used my tried and true source of trading economics, which then led me to this very cool graphic from the visual capitalist, links to all my data sources in the description of this video. And according to their numbers, there is about $49 trillion in M1 money circulating around the globe right now. But that only includes USA, China, Europe, and Japan. So we're going to bump that number up about 20% to account for the rest of the world's M1 money supply, which brings us to a total approximate M1 money supply of about 59 trillion US dollars today. And this number tells us exactly how much silver we need to have a millionaire's share. Because $1 million is 0.0000002% of the total M1 money supply. Meaning, if you multiply that percentage by the 4 billion ounces spread amongst stackers and sitting on the shelves at your local dealers, you only need to put 68 ounces of silver on the table to hit an equivalent percentage of total supply that $1 million is to the total M1 money supply. 
And funny enough, if we go back to where that puts you amongst other silver stackers from my top 1% of stackers video, you'll see that was just enough to crack the top 20% of silver stackers. So if my minimum stacking target of 200 ounces is a bit ambitious for you at this time, I'd say try to get to just 68 ounces. It might make you feel good knowing just how special that number is. And now to the viewer question for this video, and I got this one via email, and I am going to conceal the name of the person who sent it because this topic is a little bit sensitive. But the question goes like this. Dear Bald Guy, he actually used my real name in the email, so I had to blank that bit out. And he asks, I was watching a video on another channel, and they said that if you travel to England with more than $10,000, you will be arrested and your money will be taken away. In your video about traveling with money, you said you can travel with more than $10,000 if you declare it. So basically, he wants to know what the truth is. So instead of having you all take me at my word, let's take a look at what the UK Customs website has to say on this topic. And here it is, the UK Customs website says, you can travel with more than 10,000 pounds in and out of the UK, you just have to declare it. And what they need for you to make a declaration is quite clear, and you can see that on the screen right here on the bottom left. And in my experience, the answers to these questions can usually be pretty vague. So to answer the question, it is exactly as I said in the video I did on this topic. And if you visit their website, you can read on, because if you do not declare the money while traveling through customs. They will not arrest you or handcuff you. They will simply confiscate the money and it could cost up to 5,000 British pounds in penalties to get it back. And I assume there's a lot of paperwork behind that as well. I mean, it's something that I would like to avoid totally. So if I was traveling through customs with more money than that, I would simply declare it. And again, this is all written in black and white on their website. Now, that's not to say that having large amounts of cash or trying to do transactions with large amounts of cash is a good thing or even easy to do these days. It is becoming harder and harder to make large transactions using cash these days because the government and institutions are discouraging it. They prefer options that can be tracked whilst hiding behind the excuse of crime and money laundering in order to force you to make your transactions, or at least encourage you to make your transactions in a digital way. Again, as I said, which is easier for them to track. That is 100% true. But YouTubers need to be very careful in how they inform their viewers about this very real threat. And they have to make sure their content is backed up with facts not just feelings, because it's embellishments like that from the one the, in the video that the, that the person who asked me the question about, it's embellishments like that which gives the foundation to skeptics as well as the mainstream media to call people like me and other people in this space tinfoil hat conspiracists. When we all know darn well we're not tinfoil hat conspiracists, we are freedom lovers and people who like to secure ourselves financially using hard assets. That said, I thank you all for watching this video, and thank you again for helping me reach 20,000 subscribers. I'm truly humbled by the fact that there are so many people out there who are willing to click on the subscribe button. And if you want more Bald Guy content, please remember you can support me on Patreon, which also helps keep this channel honest and sponsor-free. Link to join my Patreon is in the description as well as the pinned comment to this video. And until next time, I wish you all a great day ahead. Until we see each other again, goodbye.